Hello, I'm Andrew Smith from Treescape Certified Arborist. Welcome to this week's edition of the Green Review. Today we're going to be talking about the damage that trees will sustain from storms and different other weather uh, activity that we experience here in Canada. One of the biggest things that affects our trees is the wind, and it, and it will have a, an effect on our trees in many different ways. Now, primarily this will affect deciduous trees from the standpoint that uh, the deciduous trees have a large canopy, a full leaf, and we have what's called a wind sail effect, and that's where the, the wind will come through and if, if the wind has nowhere to go because of the leaves, it'll take those branches and push them in a direction, and if they are weak, they're going to snap and break. Uh, this typically happens, obviously, when the leaves are in full, uh, full leaf, and uh, this is uh, generally between May and October. Very rarely do we see this sort of uh, damage uh, in, in the, uh, the winter months, so November through April. Something else that can have an ill effect on a tree is when we remove a number of surrounding trees, leaving that one single specimen unsheltered from the winds that it has never experienced before. Again, it can become weakened and experienced uh, damaged or broken branches. Now, in the winter time, uh, we have a lot of ice and snow here in Canada, and this can have uh, a damaging result in our trees as well. We get this heavy, wet snow and an excess of ice that can, uh, can stress the branches to a point of snapping or failing at that branch union. Now, something that a lot of people don't take into consideration is excess moisture and the effect that it can have on, uh, on, on trees and damaging them. If we have a, a, a period of prolonged dry weather and then followed by heavy rains, the tree is gonna take up as much water as it can to make up for lost time. Now, this is gonna cause the limbs to be extremely heavy with water, again, making them susceptible to failing. Combine this with heavy winds and you truly do have a recipe for disaster. Something else to consider is that uh, excess moisture uh, will loosen the soil around the trees, uh, and especially trees with shallow root systems, it could very easily cause that tree to uproot. Now, typically speaking, the point of failure where this damage occurs is going to be caused by something such as a, a weak or a stress point on the tree. And this can be a number of things. It can be a canker uh, right on the branch, uh, causing a lack of significant holding material. It could be a weak branch attachment point, so that's where that branch is coming into the main portion of the tree. Uh, it could be what we call the inclusion between codominant stems or branches. So two branches that are coming straight up, that area right in the middle is that inclusion, and it could be very weak. Uh, it could be a shallow root base or even an absence of a root system because of construction damage. Uh, there could also be stress or frost cracks. Again, this is weakening the structural integrity of the tree, uh, as well as uh, areas of significant decay that might be present on the tree. There are a number of species that are prone to storm damage. Uh, species such as poplars, willows, mantle of maple, and Chinese elm uh, tend to be a multi-stemmed tree that grow very fast. And because they grow fast, they tend to be a very soft wood, and they also sacrifice uh, their structural integrity. Uh, these trees will also grow anywhere. And because of this, they lack the sufficient anchor that the tree needs, and uh, as a result, they can be subject to, uh, to uprooting. Other trees that are susceptible to storm damage are silver maple, Norway maple, and the ash tree. Now, as far as preventing this kind of damage from happening to your tree, the best thing you can do is monitor the tree, take a picture of the tree, and, and, and compare it from season to season to make sure that uh, things aren't getting worse on the tree. Consult a certified arborist, do some regular maintenance on the tree, and where necessary, do some sort of preservation practice, such as cabling and bracing. Well, that's all the time that we have for today's uh, Green Review. Until next Friday, here's your point to ponder. The slowest growing tree known is a white cedar. Native to the Great Lakes, this tree is 155 years old and is only 10 centimeters tall. I'll see you next Friday. I'm Andrew Smith. The Green Review is brought to you by Treescape Certified Arborists. We bring trees to life.